All right. Welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. I am Beth Yarzab from the CanFit Pro Home Office. And today we have with us Nathalie Lacombe. She's going to tell us uh, about soft skills for tough times. So this is a really important webinar to be on today. There is a CEC quiz available after this webinar is finished and we'll have the replay and the email sent out to you with all the instructions on how to purchase and take the CEC quiz. And you can expect that email tomorrow. Uh, and I'm just so delighted to have Nathalie Lacombe here with us today. She is a high performance coach, consultant, mentor, speaker. She is well recognized and well renowned with her 25 years in the industry, helping fit pros and club operators with career success and business success. So we are absolutely delighted to have Natalie with us today. And I will turn it over to her, but just a reminder, if you have questions at all, please go ahead and write them in the chat. We have a few chat moderators from CanFit Pro here to answer questions, and then we'll be holding some time at the end for live question and answer. So if anything isn't answered in the chat, then we can certainly pose those questions to Natalie at the end. All right, Natalie, I'll hand it over to you. Bonjour, Fit Fam. Hi, everybody. Lovely to see you. Um, and thank you to the CanFit Pro family who's uh, back at home <laughs> and uh, handling, handling all the, uh, the questions and chat. So thank you to everybody that said, good morning. I'm going to try and not get distracted by the chat. We, we have over 200 people now, and I think 560 people registered. And so thank goodness that the CanFit Pro people are there um, to support me through this. Uh, I'm going to try and stay on and stay connected with you guys as much as possible. That said, there will be a couple of times where I'll actually ask you questions in the chat. And so feel free to put some stuff in there. And that's when I'll be able to glance over and see the information that's there then. Um, you've got a couple of polls that you may be seeing depending on the device that you're using this morning, please feel free to um, fill those out if you feel comfortable doing that, if you do happen to see them. Just stuff that I'm curious about and I wanna help you guys with and um, I'm actually getting the feedback from the polls afterwards today and there's a couple of things on there that also helps CanFit Pro bring you what you need right now through these tough times. And I imagine then that's why you're all on right now to be able to see what we can do in tough times. Um, I literally did a very similar version of this en français a week ago today, and that's when CanFit Pro asked me to do it. And I think it's critical for everyone to know that until, I don't know, 36 minutes ago, I was still moving things around. This is a reiteration a revision of a, a presentation that I've done for years called soft skills for strong bodies or soft skills that we switched over to tough times. And so the soft skills that are necessary are still there, but I wanted it to be as relevant as possible for what we're doing today and in the months to come. You might be seeing this live today. We are April 23rd today, which is my nine year anniversary. Oh, sweet. Um, and so after um, getting married on the beaches of Australia to a man I met on the internet nine years ago or a little bit over nine years ago, I bought him online and we got married in Australia. So I'm a little bit comfortable with the digital format of relationship building evidently on that's how I met Simon. And so we're going to see how we can move through these things. But whenever you're looking at this in 2020, I wanted to mention the fact or further that we recorded this in April because things are changing and adapting every day. And I am seeking out learnings and opportunities to grow and opportunities to connect with fellow fitness professionals and experts in the industry all over the world in order to bring you as relevant information as I can. And so thank you so much for being there today. Let's jump right in. Again, feel free to write your comments um, either in the chat or in the Q&A. We'll see how we go with that with the questions and I'll make sure to keep an eye on the time. I'm gonna keep this here so I can keep an eye on the time. So we have time to go over these when we're finished today. So let me click back on here. 
let's talk about soft skills a little bit. Um, the difference between hard skills and soft skills in our industry. And so the reality is, is the soft skills are what lead us towards results with our clients and participants, therefore lead ourselves to results and thriving when it comes to our own careers as personal trainers, coaches, group fitness instructors, etc. And so soft skills absolutely do matter because the reality is a lot of us can teach or know the exercises, program design is there. Um, we know the equipment that we can or can't use right now. We know all of these things. What makes a difference, regardless of the time that we are in, whether it's this time of crisis that we're in right now or years before this, um, soft skills always really matter. That's what allowed us to differentiate ourselves from other people in the industry. And that's what allowed us from differentiating ourselves from something that was free, pre-recorded, available, all over the place on the internet even before today and so let's think about how we actually motivate people so feel free to pop some things um, into the chat the chat box right now if you like if i asked you what are the qualities of motivating fitness professionals if you think about what makes the difference between a class or a um, personal training session, something that you've seen, think about it either live or online. What are those qualities that motivating fitness professionals have that you're like, I'm going to get to that when I'm going to do it. So I'm seeing things, energy, positive words, professionalism, knowledge, encouraging, leading by example, etc. ability to sincerely show you care, right? Nobody so far, and you guys are all typing a bunch of things in there. Nobody's like, you know, whether or not you use a TRX. Nobody's like the quality of their burpee. Nobody's talking about choreography, movement patterns, program design, because that is essentially, those are the hard skills of our industry. And we do need to know them. We need to understand them. We need to have the standards when it comes to that. But what really sets us apart, what makes people come back, day after day, week after week, month after month, et cetera, is our ability to connect and be able to relate to members on those soft skills. So yes, relatability, engagement, body language, et cetera. You're absolutely on track when it comes to that. So let's look at what we're facing. And I'll talk about this being pre-COVID-19. So let's look at what we're facing. And these statistics were actually from um, early into 2020 um, from Health Canada. So we know that 80% of Canadians don't meet the minimum standards, the minimum requirements for being physically active. Um, and again, this is from the Health Canada statistics. This next one I find interesting. 71% um, of them say they have firm intentions of beginning an exercise program, what that leads to afterwards is us understanding the massive chasm between intention, behavior, and then sustained behavior. Yes. And 50% of those who begin an exercise program will drop out within the first six months. Now, here's the bit that is like a knife to my heart about that one is that's been the case since I started in this industry. Some of you might know that where I came from in terms of academia was in exercise psychology. My undergrad is in psychology. My master's degree is in exercise science, but focused on exercise psychology, focused on adherence and motivation to exercise. And that stat has been in my slides of presentations for those of you that might've come to some of my stuff I did over 20 years ago, and it's 50%. And one day, you know, one day I'd like to retire and I can't do that until that's like, I don't know, 48. And it's hard to believe because of all the trends we have out there. And because we are in it, we're in a little bit of a bubble of what it looks like in our industry of what it looks like in Canada. But the reality is, is again, 80% of those people don't mean the minimum requirements and only eight to 10% of people actually are physically active in what's a structured activity similar to what we have in our gyms and our studios, et cetera. So really we're talking about a really small percentage of the population that we have ever been able to connect with and influence and help lead healthier lives and add years to their lives and lives to their years. And the economic burden of that in Canada of the 80% that don't mean the minimum, meet the minimum requirements, therefore sedentary, is about $30 billion a year as taxpayers 
et cetera. That's what this looks like. So this is what we were facing even before we had an additional um, challenge or tough time of the crisis that we're facing right now. So there is a lot of work for us to be done, which can be at times overwhelming and can be at times an opportunity for us to see what we can do, to seek out those ways that we can improve what we do and go through that. Um, Yes, so now work out online. Well, we, so uh, Don is asking about what we're doing for working out online now. So again, this is pre what's happened there. Everybody right now, let's be honest, guys, and this is kind of where I'm going with, with this is we're in a crisis mode right now and we're in trauma. This is trauma, what we're living through right now, um, based on, again, based on what mental health professionals understand and therefore we're in an ebb and a flow and a wave of figuring this stuff out. We don't know. We don't know what the results of this will be. None of us know what the results of this will be. The closest thing we can look at is, you know, the last world wars to see how that affected us internationally. This is something that's never been seen before. So looking at where people are moving and not because everyone's still in adaptation mode and everything changes every day. It's tough for us to see where we are. So this is the situation that was, we were at even before all of this started. So here's what I can tell you. These are the things that we do know. When we study exercise adherence, which means taking people who are sedentary, programming them <clears throat> into an exercise program that involves anything from just giving them, you know, access to a walking club into up to giving them access to, you know, a fully fledged personal training, nutrition, et cetera, program. When we study these, when we do research based on physical activity adherence, there is one factor that if it is included in a study, always best predicts whether or not people will stick with their exercise program, will stick with their workouts and move forward in them. There is one factor that always pops up as the best predictor of exercise adherence, people sticking to the program. Can you guess what that is? Type it out. Let me see what's in the chat. If you had to guess what that one factor is that if it's studied actually predicts people's exercise experience. Oh, I actually had one person. So I can give you a hint. One person got it. I'm looking at them coming in, coaching, community, success. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. A few of you have it. A few of you have it. Are you ready? Drum roll, everyone. And fun. Pleasure. Fun is the best predictor of physical activity adherence, of exercise adherence. So you guys, wow, uh-huh. Um, what I hear oftentimes from fitness professionals is results. Oftentimes they're like results. The reality is, is unless there is pleasure and fun in there, we usually will never get anywhere close to that. Um, and that's the situation that we deal with. That's where we are at is pleasure. And here's the thing with fun, by the way, it's fun for them. Haven't been not versus fun for you haven't been going to uh, fitness conventions and conferences and being a part of it as an executive for CanFit Pro for 10 years and, and doing it, you know, in Canada and all around the world. I always have a little bit of trepidation watching some of the workouts and seeing how exercise professionals are like, oh my God, this is amazing. Um, and I worry that the filter about the filter of taking what we do in conventions where it's us crazy people that are doing these ridiculous things like, you know, burpees on a BOSU swinging from a TRX with a kettlebell on our left foot. And we're like, this is great. And I always want to be like, well, but that, 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 hold, <laughs> is this fun for you or is this fun for normal people? Because I say this with all the love in my heart. And if anybody's met me, you know that I love a lot. Um, we crazy. We're a little bit, <laughs> we're not normal people. Statistically, we are not normal. Statistically, it's not normal to be physically active, never mind physically active in a formal setting, never mind loving it so much, you're going to join the industry, which in the best of times, isn't something that's massively revenue producing. Very few of us have ever joined this industry to make a lot of money. And so for us to like it, statistically, not only participate in it, but like it, like it so much, we do it 
in an organization, like it so much we make a career out of it, whether it be part-time or full-time, isn't normal within the standards of how we measure these statistically. And so we forget sometimes what's fun for normal people and think about what's a little bit fun for us. And so there are things there that we need to look at in terms of what is a pleasure, pleasureful for them in order to do that. And we're at a time right now where that pleasure can be identified, I actually think a little bit more easily. Um, so there's a great opportunity for us to do that. So let's look at where we are right now, friends. Let's look at what we're dealing with right now. We are navigating through tough times. Um, still in Canada, all fitness facilities are closed. Um, the Quebec government announced that next week they will share. So again, on April 23rd today, next week they will share what they see as a reopening plan strategy for businesses. Now, um, they also said that we will still hear about COVID-19 consequences, probably certainly into 2021, probably even into 2022. So that plan doesn't mean we're reopening in June. That plan means here's what we're looking at and here's when businesses will reopen. So we don't know when the fitness industry bricks and mortar will be able to open. What we can do in the meantime is reflect. And I talk about reflection being the difference between reacting and responding. It's actually what separates us from animals. Animals react, humans have the capability of responding. When the gyms first closed, I saw a lot of our, my colleagues being reactive, and I use the words very carefully, throwing themselves onto virtual fitness and virtual training. I actually wrote at the time, and this was like mid-March, a you can go on virtual, but you don't have to. And the reason I said that then is because the trauma and anxiety was palpable from a lot of the streaming workouts that I was seeing. At the time, a lot of it was just, you know, Instagram, Facebook, et cetera, going live. And the trauma was palpable so much so that, you know, some of the group fitness instructors, having known them, I'm like, if this is how you felt, you would have probably gotten a sub today. And instead, what we were doing is we were throwing ourselves online with, you know, the husband or the wife in the back going on the wrong foot and the frustration with technology. And it was very reactive. What I'm seeing now, because we're over a month in, um, are many of you reflecting on what makes sense for you, deciding what you're going to do, when we're going to do it, um, and not over, over promising and under committing because we, I hope you know, and if not, I'll let you know right now that teaching coaches training on virtual is very different than doing it in person. The big piece that's missing from that for a lot of us, the big piece that's missing for a lot of us is the feedback. Group fitness instructors, many of them, are used to being applauded at the end of class. Personal trainers get feedback throughout every minute of a session. Small group training coaches are used to moving a lot of people around. And even if you're doing it on Zoom, like I am, my classes are being streamed right now um, from the yoga studio in which I teach, I'm still kind of, you know, swiping right, swiping left and seeing what's out there and creating these opportunities to see them. I've asked them to put their cameras on, but not everybody's comfortable doing that. And so I invite you to consider that what you do in virtual demands very different of you than what you do normally. So if you're used to training 12 clients a day or teaching six classes a day, this needs to be modified. We need to reflect. We need to understand that we need to be ourselves in order to give of ourselves to other. The self-care piece of it is absolutely critical. And so that'll be a soft skills we'll get into. And asking ourselves where it comes from. So is it FOMO? Because it felt like FOMO a lot in the beginning, which is why people were doing stuff on virtual. Or is it actually an opportunity to collaborate and connect and see what we want to do? FOMO's fear of missing out. So fear. Thank you for the question, Kevin. So FOMO is doing it from a place of fear versus doing it from a place of service. I'm doing this today from a place of service. Had CanFitPro asked me to do a webinar like this one 
on, I don't know, I'm looking at my calendar, I don't know, on March 23rd, I would have said no. I would have said no, even though a lot of other people were like, yeah, I'll do it, I'll do a webinar, I'll do this. I'm like, no, I'm not, I'm not ready. I wasn't personally in a place where I felt healed enough from what was going on to do it, nor did I feel I was taking care of myself enough to be able to give anything to everybody else. My cup was really empty because I didn't know what was going on. And the grief was stronger than the opportunity or desire to serve. And so these are some of the things we wanna think about. And then there's the question of content versus context and access. And I'm borrowing this from Gary V. Some of you might know him from um, social media, a um, bit of a social media and marketing and sales icon, which is the difference between content and context and access. And I'll separate them this way is content is everywhere. Content always was there. People were always able to find exercises, program designs, fitness classes, um, you know, recipes, nutrition plans, et cetera, et cetera. It was always on the internet, but now it's gone 10 to a hundred times bigger. Content is there. Content oftentimes is where we can look at what's available for free. If we're trying to sell content, it becomes a little bit different. The piece where we come in, where our expertise, where knowing our clients, we're having those opportunities to connect, giving access to us as valuable, credible, qualified fitness professionals comes in in context. The reason that my Saturday morning 8.30 yoga and training participants come to my class oftentimes is because I know they're bobos. I know their aches and pains. I know them and they know my voice. They know um, my jokes. <laughs> you guys all know them now. They know my personality. It's familiar to them. And right now, the comfort of familiarity is really, really important. We can do workouts with anybody in the world, but I'm not finding a lot of people doing that. Again, I talk to dozens of fitness professionals and club managers and everything every day, and I have for the past six weeks. What I'm finding more than anything else is that people will go to the person they know. Here's why. Our ability, our capability towards novelty, change, adjustment, adaptation is being really, really tapped out. It's being tapped out when we go to the grocery store. It's being tapped out the once a day where we walk our dog and we're social distancing from people. It is, and I heard somebody say this and I'll repeat it, it is an act of love. Social distancing, it's an act of love, it's an act of care. It's the way we as a society are taking care of one another. It doesn't change the fact that it's unusual. It doesn't change the fact that it's change and an adaptation and it feels strange. And so we fill up our cup of the, I'm changing, I'm changing, this is new, this is new, this is new. And at some point the capacity is maxed out. So when we want to work out or exercise or challenge ourselves physically, mentally, energetically, emotionally, it might be nice to go to the place or the person or the voice that is familiar because that's pre providing comfort right now. So I would consider how as much as everybody's on virtual right now, um, or a lot of things are, maybe the best in the world from New Zealand, from the United States, from anywhere else is available, but you are their person. You are the one they are familiar with. You are a place of comfort. You are the place where, where they decide to challenge themselves because a workout right now has always been, but even know right now is a physical, emotional, psychological challenge. You're the place of comfort for that. So I invite you to consider that in the way that you decide what will be free versus what has value. I am of the opinion, and a lot of people are, a lot of our industry is, that that has value. The context and the access and the comfort and the community has value. It's not just content. It's not just first we do do burpees, then we do squats, then we do this, then we, it's not, that's content. Who you are and the soft skills that you provide, thanks to context, access, community, and comfort has value. So that's my message for all of you. Because again, our capacity for novelty and change is being tapped out. Um, 
I know that the people who have been coming to my class and the reason I chose that class and I waited a few weeks, by the way, to go back to it. Same thing. My yoga studio offered it, I think late March. And I'm like, I'm not ready. I need to do it. It's not just stay. Let's move the furniture. Let's go. I wanted to make sure I was there. It's comfortable for me because it's my regular time slot. It's Saturday morning, 830, which is the class I taught at that studio. And so that actually puts me back in a routine and the routine is comfort. So for me, it was a good spot. And again, I asked them to turn their cameras on at the beginning, just so I can see them and say, hello, see how they're doing. And they're like, you know, I'm like, how's your back? And they're like, mm, this week, it's a little bit like this. Again, very familiar, very comfortable. And then if they want to turn it off during the workout, that's up to them. It's their choice. I don't impose it. The accountability is there if they want to keep it on. But then at the, at the end of practice, because it's yoga, we have a cup of tea together. And that has been not only valuable, um, but kind of emotional for a lot of them because it's an opportunity for us to come together. That yoga studio always serves tea after class. And so we have tea time because that I think is what makes a huge difference to them in their week. For you, it might be a virtual high five. It might be a virtual hug. Maybe that's just me because I'm French Canadian, but whatever makes sense for you, whatever provides that is you reconnecting and reflecting on that is you demonstrating your soft skills and understanding it's not just about the workout. So we are in adaptation mode when it comes to what's happening right now in person and virtually. Um, we are in adaptation mode. Different doesn't mean it's not as good. Different doesn't mean it's less expensive. There's a lot of clubs in Canada that are flipping their memberships or their subscription opportunities to virtual and not changing the prices based on what it is in person. They've gone for streaming for group fitness, small group training sometimes is on Zoom, personal training can be on FaceTime, whatever it is they're doing. Um, and they're charging the same price as they would for a subscription or membership in the facility because to them that's just as valuable. And that actually makes the decision making easier when it comes to buying. So something to think about. Think about packages and subscriptions a little bit more than selling one-on-one -on -one sessions because then it's a more complete opportunity. And if anybody wants to know more about that, please let me know. Um, feel free. I'm, I'm trying to let the Cancer Pro girls take care of the chat because I know they know the answers to all those things. If there's anything for me, again, we'll talk about it a little bit later, guys. Um, but if you want to know more about that, my contact information is at the bottom of the slide and at the end. What's mine is yours. I do do coaching and mentoring, but right now, very few of us are bringing in revenue. And so I'm happy to have a conversation with you and hopefully get you set up and then we'll see where it goes from there. And the reality is, is what, who you are in terms of your soft skills applies to all forms of communications and interactions right now. It's not just in person. It's not just virtually. Every text that you sent out, every phone call that you make, if you haven't done it yet, the clubs that are doing real right now and selling right now and going back to working with their clients and participants are the ones that contacted them and said, and because they're actually picking up the phone right now because everybody's home, yay, when does that ever happen? Called them and said, how are you doing? Is there anything I can do? Do you need any help? What are your needs right now? And they've created programs based on those and they're doing really well and they're surviving and moving through the industry in that way and create an income for themselves because although some people are not in a place to spend money on physical activity, fitness, health, et cetera, right now, a lot of people are. And it just means that we're there to help them. They are counting on us for a lot. So we need to take care of ourselves, but there's an opportunity there. So these are, and I'll go through them um, today. These are the six soft skills that I feel are really, really relevant right now and critical for fitness professionals as we move through these challenging times. So let's talk about self-assessment and self-acceptance. I'm going to invite you to... Um, Take note or do it right now if you can of what your personal values are. And I'd invite you to brainstorm a little bit on the five personal values that are most important to you. Now, here's my best suggestion to do this. Pretend you're online dating. Again, bought my husband on the internet, got married nine years ago today. Thank you to us. And so I have experience with this. It was eHarmony at the time. If you had to fill out the five things that are you're like, these are the things I value the most. These are the most important things to me. Um, what would you fill out? 
or do it the other way around. Think about the last person that you broke up with. What are the five things, why, five reasons you did break up with them? And the opposite of that becomes your value. Sometimes it's easier to think about the negative than it is about the positive, depending on how you guys are doing today. So in whichever way that makes out, let's think about those values. So for me, um, positivity being a value that's really important to me, um, honesty, integrity, think about what those values are because those transfer really smoothly, whether you know it or not, whether you like it or not, into who you are as a fitness professional. What I invite you to do, and this is your homework after today, is to think about the actions you take in your regular life, in your career, maybe have in the past and see what makes sense now that actually live those values. So if, for example, one of your values is family and you're like, I always used to do potlucks um, when I, you know, when I, I taught classes and once a month we would do a potluck and everybody get to know one another because that's how I demonstrated value. Then what can we do now in order to highlight that a little bit? And then actions you can take to live these values. Because as an example, if integrity is one of your values and you've put yourself on virtual so much that you're exhausting yourself and not taking care of yourself while you're coaching others to take care of themselves, then maybe you need to ask yourself if you're really living that value of integrity. So something to think about for you guys when it comes to homework. It's the only way that we can be authentic and the only way that we will thrive through these times and past these times is to get really, really clear on who we are and what matters to us. You might be offered opportunities that make sense for you. You might be offered opportunities that don't. Some of the clubs are rehiring. Some of the clubs are looking for other people. Now might be the right time to realize if you miss your workplace or not. Now might be the perfect time to think about that. What are the things that you miss about it? What are the things that you don't? And is that the right place for you to go back to if and when it does reopen? Some will, some won't. So let's consider all of these things and see where we wanna go as we move into our authentic selves and what we can do and what is actually not part of who we are that perhaps was something we were doing just because we were stuck in it. So perhaps a client that you're like this, I'm so not meeting their needs and I dread working with this person every Monday, 6 p.m., then ask yourself if this is the right time to make some tough decisions. If it's a class that we're teaching just because you've been teaching it forever, but really you would like hope that somebody offered to sub it for you so you could do something else, then let's reconsider these opportunities now to really reflect on what matters to us and where we can be our most authentic. Yeah? Let's think about communication and listening. And um, for Beth and those listening at Care on the webinar, I'm gonna go quiet for 60 seconds, which have I, having worked with these people, it's gonna freak them out. So I'm just letting you guys know that this is what's gonna happen. So active listening is very different than listening. And I chose a juvenile image because this is how we teach kids the difference between hearing and listening and active listening. So we are all going to assume the position. Are you with me? No matter where you are right now. If you're sitting on the floor, then you want your sit bones down. If you're sitting on a chair, you do want your sit bones on the chair and feet on the floor. Let's find something for our hands to be still. Again, Frenchie here, this is how I talk. I'm sweating now from sitting down talking to you guys because I talk with my hands a lot. So we need to do this. Both ears are open and eyes are for you right now towards your screen, for me right now towards the camera. And the mouth is silent. Active listening means actually paying attention to what the person does. It means not thinking about what we're going to respond. It means not interrupting. It's one of the pieces that I have worked on a lot. I had the pleasure when I was VP at Canfit Pro to do a 360 evaluation with the leaders and the managers at Canfit Pro. And one of the pieces that came up a lot felt like it, or it was associated with interrupting and patience in emotional intelligence is called impulse control. And I always thought I was really listening well because I would ask questions to get deeper into what they meant. But the reality is, is from the speaking person who's speaking from the speaker, that's an interruption. And so my 
test to you now is I'm going to get you guys talking. Hopefully your live in mates um, slash spouses, children, dogs, cats, etc. Don't think you're too crazy right now, but I will come into this position and I'm going to time myself. You will for 60 seconds. You ready to do that? For 60 seconds, talk to me about the meal you're most excited to have in a restaurant when they open. I'm going to not do it. I know it's close to lunchtime for those listening to this live. So I apologize if it gets your tummy grumbling, but for 60 seconds, please keep eyes on me right now on the screen. Um, actually, you know what I'll do? I'll do this for two. Oh, I'll leave it like that, but keep your eyes on where my bit is on the screen and ready. and stop so no i could not see you i imagined you all a uh, few hundred of you telling me about all these places now i feel i'm really hungry the idea is getting used to 60 seconds for some of you that might have you guys are typing it out for some of you that might have felt really long and oftentimes people tell me that when i do this exercise in person because they're like that was really long and i'm like yeah because we're not used to people actively listening to us for 60 seconds, 60 seconds. So I invite you, here's a little homework piece number two, to try this with someone in your home today and to be the listener and to see what's happening in your mind, in your body as this goes. Um, active listening is different than hearing because hearing is one of our senses. Listening is an art and active listening takes practice. Um, but people aren't, people are taking in information right now, but aside of what's happening in their home, they're very rarely giving information right now. And so it's an opportunity for us to, again, pick up the phone, get on zoom on FaceTime on WhatsApp video on whatever you want to do and connect with somebody and ask them, how are you doing? Is there anything you need? So that's my little suggestion for today. Trustworthiness is our next soft skill. So building accountability and a sense of responsibility. Most people think that we want to work out all the time. Normal people think that as exercise professionals, we are motivated to exercise every single time. Lift up your hand, all 300 something of you, if you have never in your entire life not been motivated to exercise. That was a bit of a double negative, but meaning every single time you're going to work out, you're like, yeah, I'm pumped. Let's go. Every single time. There's times we don't feel like it, but we don't necessarily talk about this with other people. I invite you to ask people what their challenges are and even better yet, admit your own ups and downs because it'll take the monkey off their back of thinking they always have to be motivated. They actually see that as the destination. Most people see the destination exercise, not just the weight loss, the results of this or that, everything else. They see the destination as getting to the point where they're motivated 100% of the time, which means they're constantly in failure. They're constantly thinking they're failing because any time that they're like, I'm not into it today, they're like, I'm not there yet. I haven't reached the destination, I haven't reached the destination. So let's take the destination off of their backs and allow them to be flexible in that. And even better yet, share your own strategies to overcome them. Mine are music and I'm just gonna do 10 minutes. That's one of mine. On the days where I'm not feeling like it, I'm like, I'm gonna start this 30 minute virtual class that I, I picked for today workout I'm gonna do today. But after 10 minutes, if I'm not in the mood, it's okay. And then what usually happens? I usually end up doing it all. But you have strategies to overcome them. I invite you to share those with the people that you think about. 
And let's think about positive thinking as our next soft skill that I think is really critical. The short term cost, short term costs associated to beginning an exercise program far outweigh the long term goals. The long term opportunities we know about, we know where people will get to, but short term physical activity takes time, usually costs money, and is painful. So let's think about something that takes time, costs money, and is painful and see if that's desirable. The example I usually use is blood pudding. I don't know if anybody on the phone likes, on, on the call likes blood pudding. I don't know if you even know what it is, but it's a sausage made of blood. Anyways, sorry to the vegans out there, but that's what it is. Most people don't like it. Very few people do. And I yet to use the analogy of like, imagine if you were told that you need to eat blood pudding every day. It's the source of life and health and fitness. And you went to the blood pudding center and they're like, great, there's blood pudding all over the place. I know you spent all this money on being able to access blood pudding, but in order to really know it, because you can boil it, you can slice it, you can grill it. The reality is, is you need to spend extra money for somebody for three times a week to be able to like slice it vertically versus slice it horizontally and feed you the blood pudding because it's the way that you're going to be healthy forever. Are we in the mood for it yet? Probably not. That's what we sound like when it comes to physical activity, when it comes to exercise. We cheerlead the living heck out of it and shove it down people's throats the way that in this example, somebody else would do with blood pudding. Instead of thinking about understanding and having empathy for the short-term costs which is our next soft skill, remembering what it's like to begin exercise. And I'd even tell you guys in these times that we're in right now, it's remembering what it it's like to begin exercise again, because I'm seeing a ton of you posting jokes on social media about how you can't fit in your pants anymore because none of us have worn pants with a zipper or buttons. So even for us right now, we are in a time where we need to, we are remembering what it's like to begin to exercise again. We're off our routines. We don't have access to heavy weights and machines and all these other things that we used to rely on. And we're like, yeah, I don't know if body weight's doing it for me. I need to come up with something else. Let me see. I've been using paperweights for a lot of the things. I have a bear and a ball and they're actually really great for a lot of the stuff that I do. And then I've been finding people are using, um, laundry detergent bottles as kettlebells. And I'm like, namaste, go for it. Whatever works for you. So let's have that empathy versus pushing, programming, exercise onto them like cheerleaders, forgetting the challenges that we're in right now. And we're all in an ebb of a flow and there's days where we're gonna feel great and there's days where it's gonna to be tougher. And so that empathy piece is really, really critical now more than ever. If you had to pick Two, I would say the self-awareness and self-assessment really, really critical and empathy being the other one that is massively critical right now, remembering to have some compassion that maybe yesterday was great, but today homeschooling was a nightmare. And so today's workout is going to be really, really tough. And that's possible right now. And patience. Understanding that for most people, self-efficacy is really, really low when it comes to physical activity. Because when they were kids, most of us anyways, and I might be aging myself now, but from what I hear, it's still kind of a thing in school. When we were kids, we were punished with physical activity in gym class. Remember? So you were late to gym class. What did you have to do? It's usually either push-ups or laps. And so that's why a lot of people hate running and moan every time you say, let's do push-ups. We've replaced it with a burpee now, but that's kind of what it was. So for most people, their confidence in beginning an exercise program is really, really tough. That self-efficacy piece, which is self-confidence related to one particular thing. It's low. And so my suggestion is to think about process-oriented goals rather than outcome-oriented goals. Now more than ever, maybe the outcome is weight loss, but really, I feel like right now, us making it through the day, um, having felt good about something is a win. Um, as much as in the beginning, I saw a lot of things about productivity and these kinds of things, for, for considering the fact that we're in trauma and we're in crisis, process-oriented goals, which can mean drinking 
our full couple of bottles of water for that day. That's a goal and that's success. Maybe doing some form of physical activity three times that week, some form of physical activity three times in a week is a process oriented goal. That's a big win versus the outcome goal at the end. So let's think about those so we can encourage all kinds of things that might have felt less important than the thousands of calories we were trying to burn during a, you know, boot camp hit type of workout before versus now it's like, did you meditate for three minutes today? Were you mindful of your breath? Um, did you find something fun to do with the kids for gym? Then score, check, wonderful reward. So I'll pull through a few general tips that I have when it comes to building and repairing retention in general, and especially now with our clients or participants. So listening to the terminology, which pulls us back into that empathy piece, understanding that maybe today's not the perfect day um, for a really tough workout, even though it's what we're used to, even though they're like, oh my God, I ate this and I drank a bottle of wine and whatever. If they're feeling like exercise is punishment, um, the effect of that on our adrenals is really detrimental and sleep is tough. A lot of people having really weird nightmares, getting up during the night with these cortisol peaks that they're not used to. So listen to the terminology they're saying and maybe program fitness and movement around something that's actually more relevant and practical at that time. Understanding that behavior doesn't happen overnight. Um, there will be ups and downs and we need to, to think as ourselves as behavior modification specialists sending as much as possible a positive frame of mind during those exercise sessions and classes. If they, I don't care if they show up late. I don't care if they have to leave early. I certainly don't care what their basement looks like. I just want them to have an opportunity to breathe and move and any form of movement is an exercise in self care. I'll say that again. If you take nothing away from today, please understand for yourself and communicate to as many people as possible that all forms of movement are an exercise in self-care right now. So as long as we can move and breathe, we are taking care of ourselves in a beautiful and wonderful way. Explaining that there's a slip in attendance, it doesn't imply failure. Having a fixed schedule, because a lot of people need routine right now, whatever their regular routine is, but having some flexibility because every 24 hours something changes tailoring the exercise based on peripheral needs. Maybe what they need right now is they're like, I need something to do that's really easy for my kids that are this age and this age and this age, because I'm gonna need to do something with them tomorrow instead of whatever we would have traditionally planned as a workout. Decreasing the number of steps that precede our workout, making it simple and accessible as possible. Instilling the idea of control and responsibility so that they can start to create something that is meaning for themselves. Help them focus on their health when you're not around. That's the content piece we talked about earlier. So if you're coming up with a great, you know, pre-workout snack to make with the family, do a 60 second video and post it on social media. They'll know that you're thinking of them in these other times so that you're not just theirs when you're in front of them, whether it be virtually or in person, but you're considering them at all time. And please make the experience as enjoyable as possible. The only way to do that is for you to be as authentic as possible um, and for you to be as yourself as possible and taking care of yourself. So I just wanted to remind you guys that um, the quiz is there. Um, I've, been, I've kept a little bit of an eye on it to make sure I go through all of those questions. Um, if you do wanna get the CC, and I know that the team of Cantha Pro will be doing that, and I'll leave this slide here for now before um, they pop me up to answer some of the questions. Hopefully I've kept enough time for us to go through these, but if you guys want to, oh, the poll's there. If you guys want to know anything else, future content you might want from me or for Canfit Pro, please let me know. But this is the way of getting in touch with me. Um, I am a coach. I am a mentor. I am a consultant. This is what I do. This is the revenue that I create in the industry. But really, guys, what's mine is yours. If there's something that you need right now that will take you from a place of, I have no idea where to start right now, 
Um, my gym barely has communicated with me and I don't know if they're going to reopen ever. No plan has been sent to me. If you're in that place right now, please reach out. I'm happy to talk to you. I'll give you the time that I have. We need to help one another out right now. I'll hopefully send you to some places um, in Canada or anywhere else that are doing things that might be a good fit for you. I'll do whatever I can. What's mine is yours. We have to help one another out right now. So don't worry about it. You can go to the website and fill out some stuff there if you want. You can reach out to me via this, my social media handle there. You can reach out to me by email. Please do um, because we need to take care of one another right now. And my reason for being is serving the industry that has brought me the most wonderful, passionate, incredible relationships for the past 25 years. Um, so I'll check in with Beth, who might have pulled up. Hi, there you are. Hi, I'm Beth. I'm going to take a sip of water. And Beth, if there's any questions that you felt I needed to answer, I'm happy to answer yes, those. There are a few. Thank you. Um, the first question is actually, if someone wanted to source this presentation um, in something she's preparing for her work, what would be the best way for her to source uh, you and this information, would it be your website or how? Um, the website or she can um, send me an email and I'll give you the PDF of this. This exists in a PDF version. Um, I'll happily send it through. Okay, that's wonderful. So that'd be the easiest way to get through it and I'll send you that. Um, and yeah, hopefully that helps. Awesome. Um, some of the, some people would like to see those top 10 retention slides, uh, the slides that you had that you- Was it the top, top 10? Or you know what I think it might've been was, hold on, I'll stop share for two seconds. Mm -hmm. um, I think what it might've been was the original slide. So let me okay. come out of that. And I will remind folks that this will be available on the CanFit Pro YouTube channel, hopefully by the end of day. So you can go there and check out this webinar replay and then you can just quickly scroll through all the slides that Natalie has provided here. And let me go to from current slide. And there. unfortunately the quiz code one was for cultivating resilience. It's that particular CEC quiz that's available in your member portal. This quiz is available for $30 plus applicable taxes. Okay, so let me see if there were some more questions. I did write a few down. Um, someone was interested in subscription services and you mentioned that quickly offering subscription services mm -hmm. do you have any more ideas that you could share about how to get started with that so i won't get into it in the tech in particular here's a, a quick tip i'll give you though on instagram um because again i'll send you to the place where there's got the most information because i'm constantly sourcing these things out sadie nardini S-A-D-I-E, Nardini, is a very well-known um, yoga teacher, etc. Sadie's had subscription websites forever, and she does the math on the, if you're going to teach six classes a week and you're trying to sell them on Zoom at 10 bucks a pop versus creating something that's subscription and the difference in profitability and revenue generation from that, if you can get 50 people on, she literally goes through the math, um, and it's quite remarkable the difference between the two. And so um, she gives a couple of suggestions too as to where to go. There's a lot of them out there and there's a lot of new ones coming in. So um, with, you know, whether you use Trainer Plus, um, Wexfit, Trainerize, uh, there's a Pro Coach, there's a ton of different things on there. When it comes to streaming, then there's a million of them. Um, if you're streaming for the first time, if, and, and again, it's the big difference is if you're happy to stream means it's one way you don't see them. Um, if you want something that's two-way, then you might use something along the lines of Zoom, which we're doing today. Um, Zoom webinars, which we're doing today, are streaming ones. Zoom meetings are ones where you can actually see the other people. So there's a lot of stuff out there, but for the math, go check out Sadie's. She has a post in the last seven days on Instagram that literally explains that. And if you can't find it, again, contact me and I've bookmarked it so I can send it to you. So that might lead into the next question, which was around pricing. But mm -hmm. if you have anything else to offer around pricing in terms of ideas, um, this particular member was asking, you know, some people are offering for free, mm -hmm. some are offering $25 and you come and do anything, anything you want in our portal. So it's, mm -hmm. it's all over the place. Thoughts? It, it is. And it, it was all over the place because everything was free five weeks ago. Not everything is free now. So my first one is remember what I talked about content versus context. 
if you're just going on Instagram and doing a workout for free, that's fine. I wouldn't do that every day. And I wouldn't do that forever. Everybody did that in the beginning because we didn't know how long this was going to last. This, the return to fitness facilities at full capacity, the way it was, I don't think, I don't think will ever happen. Um, because there's so much opportunities on virtual now, my recommendation or my, my opinion, um, as, as you know, new as every, as we're learning now is the gyms that will survive through this and past this are the ones that are going to have hybrid approaches, both in person as well as virtual, because there are some people that even when the gyms open are not going to want to go. And so content can be free. And even the people that offer paid stuff, I've offered paid stuff on virtual for a year and a half, but I offer a ton of free content. My content is always there for free. But if people wanted something that was contextual, customized and access to me, that's where the pieces were coming in paid. If you haven't figured out something paid yet, I invite you to do it. And I invite you to do it based on something that is very similar to what your live classes were, as opposed to it's different because it's virtual. Um, Beth and I actually talked about this last week and I love the option of the, this is what the value is. My classes are $10 each, $20 each. My personal training is 50, $75 each. Same, same as what we do in person, which means you need to be really prepared to offer the same type of authentic experience. But for those who aren't able to do it, perhaps there is a, if you'd like to make a contribution based on where you are now, please feel free to offer what you want. If you're okay doing that, that's okay too, because there's a lot of people out of work right now, but that still means that the value is there. This is the value of what I'm offering. If you want to buy the package, you can. If you, that's not something you can afford, that's okay. I'm still here for you. Here are some things that you can do instead. Yes, I've seen some people offering a pay what you can. Pay what you can. Thank you, Beth, for yeah. translating that into what I was trying to say. Yes. Um, Natalie, what about newcomers? Someone who's just certified, who's trying to get a business started or looking for employment in a gym, which is not open. What advice do you have for someone who's new to the industry mm -hmm. right now? So I would keep up in what's happening in the industry. I'd have a look online. Again, get on the social media sites for all of those employers. Make sure that you follow Fitness Industry Council of Canada, FIC, um, because they're putting a lot of those things there. Um, I will say, um, call me, <laughs> contact me, and I can help you find some of those things. Um, because what you need to do right now is start to develop those relationships and develop the trust. If people don't know you yet, then state phase one is um, your trust, your brand, your authentic self. And there's ways of doing that starting on right now using virtual, using social media and to start to develop your clientele from there. There is lots of room for all of us to be successful in this, if anything, more than ever, because people want to move and they're looking for opportunities to connect. Why not do it in something that builds physical, mental, and emotional health like we do? What about um, your thoughts on if all of the free offerings are now undermining those fit, fit pros who want to offer something for a compensation? I don't think they are. Guys, the reality is, is free stuff was always there. Um, a lot of people now are online and they're, they're struggling with the difference between free and paid. But imagine those of us that have always done stuff on virtual. We're like, I used to, you know, there used to be 10 of me. Now there's 162 of them. We're all in the same pool right now. Free work, YouTube didn't launch May 17th, March 17th. Um, there was always free stuff. There was always free stuff. The difference is you. So again, if the free stuff is there, chances are what's on free is streamed. It's not an accountability opportunity. It's usually done on Facebook Live. It's usually done on Instagram Live. And therefore, they don't see the other people there. It's not two-way, right? So two-way with context with access, with accountability is absolutely something that is paid. And I'm asking you guys to trust me. There are fitness professionals, group fitness instructors, um, small studios, larger gyms doing it right now. And it's working. It really is working. So we need to try and go with where our comfort is right now. But the fear of free has never been something that has worried me. Decide what you're going to do for free. Maybe it's a weekly recipe because you're like, I need to I need to be in the free. You need to provide content and connect with people. But that context and that access, that two-way accountability has always been something that has value and it still exists today. 
Amazing. Uh, we should be wrapping up now. It is just about time. Natalie, is there anything else that you would like to add as we uh, call this webinar complete today? Mm, I feel, okay, so first thing I'm going to do before I forget is this. This is me <laughs> hugging everybody on there. This is me receiving. Oh, God, guys, this is, it's, it's, it's scary because um, it's the unknown. So the best thing for us to do as an industry is to collaborate and come at it from a place of collaboration versus a place of competition. Talk to one another like this, get on the Canfor Pro webinars, start with the steps that you feel comfortable with, get out of our comfort zones a little bit to try some things and understand that we are all in this together. Um, people are counting on us to provide. Let's make sure that we're filling ourselves up as much as possible so that when we do serve, um, we serve from a place of service versus serving from a place of fear. So I know, I know how this feels. Um, we all have our moments of grief and everything else. Let's keep coming together. We will get through it together. And so let's work with one another as much as possible, share with one another as much as possible, um, try some things and don't worry about perfection. Strive towards authenticity. Excellence will come with practice. Thank you so much, Natalie. Thank you everyone for joining us. Stay safe, stay healthy.